I've said it quite a few times in the past on different uh, mediums, but uh, most of the buyers of the E39 M5s that uh, do end up selecting EHE cars have been previous E39 M5 owners. And I always find myself having a similar conversation with these guys and them telling me all the memories that they had in their, other, their former E39 M5 and uh, the fun things that they did in that car. What they liked about that car, why they wanted to have another one. Uh, this has usually been my car of choice when we're picking up a new client at the airport to have their EAG experience and so a lot of time uh, riding back to EAG for that 30 to 50 minutes, uh, getting to know them uh, more so in a personal format uh, given that we're not doing it over the phone but actually doing it in person uh, which is um, certainly a, a, a very fun part of the job and, and uh, something unfortunately we won't be able to be doing for any time soon while we go through uh, the next couple of weeks and months and do hope everybody's staying safe out there. Uh, I find myself sharing my own memories driving E39 M5s with other fellow enthusiasts and driving around California with Ken Sparks or uh, picking up Peter Gleason or, or, uh, at the airport or uh, riding around Cincinnati a couple months ago with Jackie Jure uh, when she was in town for the BMW Foundation uh, meeting. Uh, it's just it's a it's a great car. It's just uh, it's it's gr it's a great car to share with others too because everybody that gets in it, if they've never been in one of these, certainly has a, a very profound appreciation for what the car is and what it can do and the sounds that it makes and like is that stock? Like, yep, <laughs> this is a completely stock M5. Eric Keller here, Enthusiast Auto Group. Today we're in EAG's Paint Correction and Photo Studio and we're with the Le Mans Blue E39 M5. It has just completed its lap around the turntable and in the photo studio going through and having all of its uh, images captured so that full disclosure is the normal EAG disclosure. And here in the studio we have quite a few other cars today. Uh, unlike normal times when we've got all of the pit crew detailing and getting all the cars ready for market and the normal beautification. Today Javier is taking full advantage of that in the studio and uh, going through on the Alpina, this B10 Touring. 4.6 liters of fury <laughs> in six speed form. Safe to say this is the coolest 90s wagon ever built and uh, Javier is um, having quite a good time <laughs> taking pictures of every micro imperfection which uh, oh, we only have about a dozen or so probably. This thing is about as nice as it gets. But that's not the star of the show today. Uh, this M5 has had a really good life. It's got great service documentation. We have a really good history file on the car. All the normal E39 M5 usual suspects in terms of the EAG rejuvenation roadmap. It's, it's a great car. It's an honest car. It's a very straightforward, low mileage car that's always been a luxury third car, a fun car, a weekend car. It's never had any sort of vehicular drama by any measure that we can tell during our inspection process. The window sticker is on file. It is a $73,220 M5 back in period. This is a late 2002 and they ended at 9 CF 93990. Don't ask me how I know all that stuff. Um, it's just Rain Man stuff. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> ask me something about a, a Audi. Uh, I have no clue. But uh, in the E39 M5 world, uh, this is uh, uh, our comfort zone. Um, without getting into the, the actual personal information here, we've got um, uh, some, some good documentation for the car. Uh, the car has definitely been owned most recently by a very, very large uh, uh, E39 M5 enthusiast, and I don't mean large in size, I mean large in passion. He uh, had had, he has had several other E39 M5s, and this was his third one, if I recall correctly. And he had some uh, uh, things come up in life, uh, positive things. I, I believe it was another um, uh, uh, child, and decided that uh, the third M5, uh, the one he'd been looking for for many months, many years, was probably not something he needed just at that right time, but also knew that his fourth M5 would very likely come from EAG, so might as well jump in and start a relationship with us and keep another great car and a great home, and, and uh, that's how the car ended up here.
Jumping out of the studio for a couple minutes, I wanted to share the driving dynamics of this M5 with you. Obviously the drive is, is one of the best parts about the hobby and, and driving an E39 M5 certainly is, uh, well, um, <laughs> never uh, something you have to twist my arm to do. Uh, the car, the chassis, the, the overall experience with the E39 is just, um, it's complete is the best way because it just does everything really well. It handles well, it brakes well, it certainly goes like stink. And uh, it serves a lot of utility though too because it does have the four seats and, and you can put the seats uh, down and, and haul a full load of, of gear from the hardware store. And uh, there's just not a lot that it doesn't do really well. Highway, uh, back roads, um, you name it, and it doesn't. Uh, you'll notice the interior is the Silverstone Sport. This is one of 21 in this color combo. This is a Titan trim car with the rear sunshades as you'll see there in the window with the pole. Uh, fixed rear seat, standard audio. It is a lip spoiler car and does not have the park distance control. It's all stock, it's always been stock. Uh, the car's body panels are all original and it has certainly lived a, a very good life as the driver's seat there will clearly indicate. The wheels are in great shape. They've been refinished at some point and refinished quite well. We've strapped new Michelin tires. The EAG Rejuvenation Roadmap uh, prescribed about thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars $14,000 worth of improvements to the car. To get it to our turnkey readiness standard, that included a new clutch rear main seal just because the original was still in place and certainly not long in the tooth. A pretty big suspension refresh, all the common usual suspects. The uh, drive belts, 10 year service, uh, common M5 stuff such as the rear vapor barriers and headlight adjusters, which are, are standard, no different than the cluster, the rear view mirror at this point. If they've not been done, they've failed or are really close to it. So we just went ahead and did all that stuff as well. Didn't need all that stuff right now, but in the next uh, 6, 12, 18, 24 months, it would. And somebody's going to spend that money. so. It's easier just to spend it up front as we have learned. Uh, the car is definitely one that can be used and enjoyed as a you know semi-daily driver. A couple, three, four, five thousand miles a year would be just fine on this car. Uh, 54,382 miles on the clock at the moment. The car has lived in a front license plate state, so the front bumper does have the uh, two little holes in it that I will come back to when we head up to the front. Driver's seat is in really good shape. All original leather. Steering wheel's original to the car. Headliner's original to the car. The headliners have started to fail on us. More so on the hot climate cars. Florida, Texas, anything that's sat outside for a long period of time, you're gonna likely be doing a headliner. And if you're not, um, right now you will be soon. And if it needs it and you don't know it or see it, it's because you haven't looked hard enough. Uh, look up under the map pocket or the, the um, visor pockets. There's the first spot that it's going to let go. Uh, that's not if it's a hot car. If it's been in a garage its whole life and been pampered, you're probably okay for another 5, 10, 15, 20 years. We've still got the majority of the E28 M5s, albeit it is a different headliner style on the E28s. We're not doing a lot of those, uh, historically speaking. E36s, that's a whole different story. S62, five liters of fury. <laughs> it's a great engine. This engine is really certainly a very big part of what makes the E39 M5 so special. It's the last of that modern, modern analog driving experience. It's the last BMW M5 with this really weird rare thing called a dipstick. I, like many enthusiasts, feel that the E39 M5 platform is really the best balance of, of analog mechanical performance with modern reliability and it's still a car you can work on yourself. Uh, it's no question a fun, fun car to drive and does really fun things whenever you want them to or sometimes when you don't but it's still a very predictable experience and very uh, tactile uh, and communicative to the driver.
quite happy with this M5. It is definitely an EAG caliber car. Certainly happy the previous owner reached out and gave us the opportunity to be a part of this car's life and future. And we are certainly looking forward to giving that next owner a great uh, ownership experience and, and helping support them throughout their time with the car and of course uh, bringing the car back in through the program and stable when they're done and, and uh, buy the car back as is our business model. So this is my first real test drive in this M5 and part of that process is shaping up the car in all of, you know, the sum of all of its parts. I now know the history of the car, I know the condition of the car, I know what we're doing to the car, going through the rejuvenation program to bring that car up to, to turnkey ready status for the next guy. And then I, I add in all the other variables of the color combination, obviously the mileage, uh, and put that together in a, a one long equation of what's this car worth? and then base that off of other cars that we've sold recently, given the common denominator there is the quality and the selection process of starting with the right caliber of car, putting it through this very consistent program, and then understanding what uh, one color, say titanium silver or versus Le Mans blue, all things equal, you know, how do those color differences uh, affect the value? And that data is something we've been compiling for a very long time and have no shortage of, of supply and then work with closely with some other valuation guides supplying them with that data too. And uh, on this car, we've arrived at a valuation of 56,990 bucks. And that is concurrent with other M5s that we've sold here recently and in line with what we will uh, expect this car to, to do in the market today. There's not, <laughs> there's not enough high quality, low mileage E39 M5s um, in circulation and many of the many of the enthusiasts that we're selling them to are keeping them for long periods of time at, at this point. And so uh, it is um, difficult to, to get more supply. If, uh, if you do have a low mileage M5, do reach out. We, we certainly are interested in having the conversation. Uh, quality is very important and, and don't be too discouraged if, if uh, something just doesn't work out on the quality side. Uh, it does happen and, and we are unfortunately pretty strict. Uh, but uh, we've we have to be and uh, our clients expect that of us and, and uh, we have to for the fact that we're going to be addressing everything that we find uh, when the car goes through the program and you know, going through that program to uh, the nth degree is something we've worked hard at every year onto the next and ensuring each year after uh, we keep getting better and better and better it's very very important and, and what's helped get our business to where it's at today. Speaking of getting the business to where it's at today, we're on good old Madison Road and the GoPro has died. I wanted to show you EAG where we started. That's the first building that we started commercially at here in good old Madisonville. And, and it was a very humble beginning and the roads that I've just taken you on are responsible for the sale of so many fantastic cars over the years. Uh, just very, very uh, uh, enjoyable um, the first couple years getting going and very hard, of course, for every entrepreneur. Uh, and this wasn't the best part of town uh, to get started in, but you got to start somewhere. And I'm super blessed and super thankful to uh, have made a lot of great friends and clients and a fantastic team to help get us to where we're at. And uh, I think with that, um, it's, it's time to, to part. And um, if you're interested in this M5, do reach out. We would love to earn your business. This is a fantastic car, uh, it's available. If you have not yet subscribed, please do. And stay tuned for more of the BMW collection of all-stars. And uh, last but not least, see ya.